Please turn in your Bibles today to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, and place a marker in Joshua, chapter 1. Today when I read, I'm going to be reading from the New International Version of the Bible, and we're picking up our series called The Heart of a Leader. And in this series, we're talking about characteristics or attributes that are important for a leader to have in their life. And to do that, we are looking at the lives of some of the most influential leaders that have ever lived. For example, last week we talked about King Solomon. Solomon was one of the greatest leaders who has ever lived, and the reason is because he led with what? Anybody. Wisdom. He led with wisdom. Last week, we talked about the impact of wisdom, both on the leader, his or herself, and on the people around the leader. And then we talked about the importance of wisdom, how truly valuable and necessary it is to have wisdom as a leader. And then finally, we talked about the source of wisdom. We talked about how to get it. If you weren't able to be here last week, you can find that message on the Centerpoint NWA YouTube channel, and I encourage you to do that because I want you to be a better leader. But today we're going to move on to another area of leadership and to another leader. Today we're going to look at the life of a man named Joshua. Who's familiar with the man named Joshua from the Bible? We got a few people here who are. We're introduced to Joshua in the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers. In that passage, the Lord told Moses to choose 12 men, one from each of the tribes of Israel, to go and to examine the promised land that the Lord had said he was going to give the people. This land was the the land that God determined he would give the Israelites as a gift, as, a, as an eternal possession. And he delivered them from Egyptian captivity, and he led them to this place. It was a very, very fertile land. I believe that when God gave Moses this command, that he wanted to show the people what he had in store for them. He wanted to let them know how good it was going to be. So he told Moses to send the 12 men. So Moses chooses 12 men, one from each tribe, and we're told that they are all leaders of the Israelites. One of these men was a man whose name was actually Hosea, but the Bible says that Moses called him Joshua. The Bible tells us in Numbers 13, 23, that when the men got to Canaan, they cut a branch off of a grapevine, and it had a single cluster of grapes on it. And it said that they took that cluster of grapes, and they put it on a pole that was then carried between two men. The implication here is that the grapes were, were so large, that that cluster of grapes was so large that it would have been impractical for one man to have tried to have carried them by himself. So they put them on a pole and carried them between two men as they continued to explore the land for 40 days. And then they came back to give their report, and here's what they said. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who lived there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. One of the spies, a man named Caleb, then encouraged the Israelites to go and to take possession of the land that the Lord was giving them. But then 10 of the spies all joined forces, and they said, listen, there's no way. The inhabitants of the land are too big for us. The obstacle is too large. 
This is where I want us to pick up the story in Numbers chapter 14, and I want us to read verses 1 through 9. It says, that night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Verse 5 says, then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes. You can wait till you get home to watch that message. And said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. So the 10 of the spies said, there's no way we can go in and take the land. The people there are too big. But then Joshua and Caleb said, no, 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 listen. This is a good land. There's plenty of fruit. There's plenty of food. There's everything that we need. We're standing here in the wilderness. Let's go. They said, if God is with us, we'll be able to defeat them and even devour them. Today we're talking about the heart of a leader, and one thing that you will find in the heart of every good leader is courage. What is courage? You know, I don't know. I'm, I, I got a mixed up mind, but when I think of courage, the first thing that comes to me is that lion in a Wizard of Oz. He was searching for that courage, wasn't he? Then he found it. Wikipedia says that courage is the choice and willingness to confront agony, pain, danger, uncertainty, or intimidation. Man, I think that's a good definition. I love that definition. But if you don't like that one, perhaps you'll like this one. It's a lot simpler and easier. It's credited to Eddie Rickenbacker. Do you know who that is? He doesn't make popcorn, I'll tell you that. He was one of the world's most decorated, not of the world's, of the U.S.'s most decorated fighter pilots in World War I. This is what he said. Courage is doing what you're afraid to do. That's a good definition, too. Courage is doing what you are afraid to do. I think that's a great way to define courage when we're talking about leadership. Because in leadership, there will be multiple opportunities for you to do what you are afraid to do. Whether it's guiding an organization or a ship into uncharted waters, or having difficult conversations with your peers and your subordinates, or taking responsibility for missteps, that have cost your organization time or money or any of the hundreds of other things that present themselves to leaders on a daily basis, you will quite often have to do what you're afraid to do. And that takes courage. Today, what I want us to do is I want us to look at three very specific types of courage that Joshua exhibited in his life and that every leader needs to have in their life. The first is the courage to speak up. What I mean is the courage to say or sometimes do what is not popular. In this passage that we read, it was clear to see where the tide was going, wasn't it? 
I mean, it wasn't difficult to see that that people had made up their minds and decided that they weren't going to cross that Jordan into the promised land, and it didn't matter how big the grapes were. You ever found yourself in a situation like this? You go into a meeting or into a an opportunity really feeling like you know what the right thing to do is. And then you go into the room excited, but as the conversation evolves, you begin to see it shift. And you see it going in the other direction. You see that gaining momentum, and before you know it, everyone is wanting to do the opposite of what you think is right. You know, I almost wonder if Joshua and Caleb were the guys who carried the grapes. You ever thought about that? There were two guys that carried the grapes for 40 days as they scouted the land, carrying that pole on their shoulder, digging in right there. And then when they came back and they gave their report to Moses, there were only two guys who said, no, listen to me. Man, we got to go. This place is good. I wonder if they were the ones carrying the grapes. The conversation begins to turn to all the reasons that they shouldn't go. It begins to focus on all of the obstacles. See, God said, go check out the land. But instead, 10 of the spies went and checked out the people. I think we do that in our own lives so many times. God says, look at what I've got for you. It's so good. And we say, yeah, but. Yeah, but. As the conversation turned, Joshua and Caleb had a choice before them. It was no secret how the group felt, how the body felt, that they weren't going to go, and it didn't matter. In fact, they decided that they weren't even going to follow Moses and Aaron anymore. They said, let's pick a new leader. Who wants to be the leader? Raise your hand. We're, we're going to pick a new leader, and we're going to go back to Egypt where we're slaves. The easy thing in this moment for Joshua and Caleb would be to just keep their mouths shut. There's a riotous crowd that's getting worked up, that's going to go the opposite direction. The easiest thing to do is to just zip it. And it's not like that would be going against what's right. It's not like they're saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we agree with you. All they had to do was say nothing. I mean, I've watched cops a lot. You know what I've learned? If nothing else, I've learned that you shouldn't run from the cops because they're going to catch you. But the other thing I've learned is that we have the right to remain silent. Right? No. You had better believe that Joshua and Caleb knew that as a leader, you do not have the right to remain silent. The Bible says that Joshua and Caleb tore their clothes and they told the Israelites that the land was a good land and that with God they could defeat the people there. Then they said, whatever you do, don't rebel against the Lord. Whatever you do, don't rebel against God. A leader has the courage to speak up. You need to have the courage as a leader to speak up. Now, listen, I'm not telling you that next time you're in the conference room and the conversation goes the wrong way that you need to tear your clothes and scream. Probably wouldn't be wisdom. We talked about that one last week. But I am telling you that as a leader, you don't have the luxury of remaining quiet when people under your influence are headed in the wrong direction. Now, Joshua and Caleb's decision didn't go very well for them. They spoke up, and the very next verse that we didn't read said the people started talking about stoning them. Luckily, the Lord showed up right then, put a stop to that whole mess. But unfortunately, because the nation of Israel had gone against God, 
he made the decision that no one who was an adult at that time except for Joshua and Caleb would enter the promised land. And so the Israelites found themselves wandering in a wilderness for 40 years waiting on the last one to die. But for Joshua's part in these events, he was chosen by God as the next leader of Israel after Moses' death. To read about that, we're going to jump ahead about 40 years to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. And I want us to read together verses 1 through 11. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse number six, the Lord says, be strong and courageous. Everybody say courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Verse 9, the Lord said, Have I not commanded you, be strong, and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Verses 10 and 11 say, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. The second type of courage I want to talk about today is the courage to step up. Can you imagine being Joshua in this moment? You've been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years since the time that you came back from the land of Canaan. And the nation's preeminent leader, Moses, has just died. And now the people are looking to you to take over. And not only that, God wants you to lead the people across the Jordan River into a land that you already know is filled with a strong and mighty people who are not going to be very happy about you trying to move in. I think it would be pretty easy in that moment to say, "Uh, no thanks, I'm good. Lord, choose Caleb. Choose Caleb. Do somebody else. I don't want this responsibility. I don't want to be the leader of these people. I want to take it easy. In this moment, there would have been so many reasons to just not. Joshua, no doubt, thought about his own shortcomings as a leader, and whether or not he could lead this vast people. He no doubt thought about Moses and how much the people loved and revered Moses and how he could never fill his shoes. He probably thought about the fact that the Jordan River was at flood stage. How would he even get the people across? And if he was able to get them across, the enemy was waiting and was strong. You too, as a leader, will face times in your life where you have to make a decision to either step up or step out. 
and choosing to step up requires a great deal of courage. Joshua surely thought about all that God was asking him to do, and then he probably thought about what the Lord had just said to him. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's quite a promise. Verses 10 and 11 say that Joshua told his officers to go tell the people, get ready. Get ready because in three days, we're going to cross that river. We're going to cross that river and we're going to go and take the land that the, God, that the Lord, our God, has promised us. A leader has the courage to step up. Three days later, Joshua led the Israelites to the Jordan River. He had the priests lead the way, and when the very first priest's foot hit the water, it says that the river stopped flowing, and the entire nation of Israel walked across the Jordan River during flood stages on dry ground. It's only the second time in the Bible that the Lord split a body of water and had his people walk across For the first time since leaving Egypt, the entire nation of Israel stood together on the land that God had promised them. What a moment. Unfortunately, the joy of that probably didn't last long because as they stood there in the Valley of Jordan, they looked across and they saw a walled city called Jericho. It was the first of many cities that would have to be defeated in order for the Israelites to take what God was giving them. The battle of Jericho is recorded in the sixth chapter of the book of Joshua. We're not going to take the time to read the entire story, but I do want us to read verses 1 through 7 of Joshua 6. It says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. And then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And then he ordered the army, Advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. The last type of courage I want to address today is the courage to show up. By that I mean the courage to show up for a fight. This could also be called the courage to suit up, the courage to strap up, or the courage to saddle up. It means the courage to do what has to be done. You see, when Joshua was standing on the other side of the Jordan, it would have been really, really easy for him to say, you know what, we should go take this land. It's a good land, and we can definitely defeat those people. Yeah, that'd be easy to say, stand on the other side of the water, wouldn't it? But standing here in front of a walled city that's full of warriors who are strong and mighty, Joshua was forced to put his money where his mouth was. He was forced to put his words into action. He couldn't just say what he was going to do or what he ought to do. He had to back it up with action. Have you ever seen a movie where where someone was talking to their friends and they said, well, it was a good thing I wasn't there because I would have. And then the person there bad-mouthing walks up behind them. They get done saying what they're saying, and everybody's standing like this, and they say, he's right behind me, isn't he? It's 
Just let me tell you something. Talk is cheap. And if you know someone who likes to run their mouth about their adversary, whether it's in work or sports or any other thing, who likes to run their mouth about the people that they don't agree with when they're not around, but when that person's around, they turn into a different person, that's not a leader. A leader says what they mean and means what they say, and it doesn't matter who's in the room. I was talking with someone at work just the other day, and they, they work in the office where our COO works. And our COO was traveling. In fact, they were in Bentonville sitting next to me when I had this conversation. And this person on the other end of the Zoom line said, well, it is kind of nice to, to be here when they're not here because I can hear what people really think. And I, my response was to kind of feign ignorance. And I said, are you saying that people aren't honest when JP's around? I said, I guess I'm just crazy. I just tell them what I think. I just say what I mean. I, I, I just tell the truth. And I was kind of jokingly saying that, but I do. Sometimes probably too much. It goes back to the wisdom thing. Unfortunately, we have too many people in this world who only say what they think other people want to hear. And whoever they're talking to at the moment, that determines what their answer is. And it makes it really difficult for the people who are following them to trust them. A real leader has the courage to show up for whatever is ahead, even if it's a fight. And let me tell you something else. If you fight for the people who are under you, sit back and watch and they'll fight for you. Because that's how we're designed. A leader has the courage to speak up, to say what's right, even if it's not popular. A leader has the courage to step up and lead even when they feel inadequate to do so. And a leader has the courage to show up even if it means for a fight. My question to you today is do you? Do you have that kind of courage? I'm going to ask everyone in the room to bow your head and close your eyes. I want to remind you that last week we talked about how everyone is a leader. It just depends on what room you're in. It just depends on who you're around. And what level of leader you are compared to the level of the people around you. Sometimes it also depends on the positional authority that you've been given versus what someone else may have. So I expect that everyone in this room is a leader. And today I have a question for you. Are you a leader who has courage? Or are you a leader who lacks courage? If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need the Lord to help me in this area. I sometimes find myself in situations where people are saying or doing the wrong thing. People are talking bad about my friends or my family or my boss or, or people are making wrong decisions and I don't have the courage to speak up. Or pastor, I, I know that God wants me to lead. I know that I'm supposed to step up and do more, but I'm scared. I'm scared, so I don't do it. I need him to give me the courage to step up. 
or pastor. I run my mouth a lot. But when the rubber meets the road, I too easily back down. I don't like confrontation, so I just let other people have their way, even if it's the wrong way. I don't take up for people who are being bullied. I don't take up for those who are weak. I need God to give me the courage to show up, even for a fight. If any of those apply to you, right now, I want you to just lift your hand up right where you're at. Hands all over the room. Lord, I am so thankful for the example of Joshua. He was a leader during a time where it would have been very scary to lead. but he had the courage to do what needed to be done and to say what needed to be said. Lord, I pray for each one who lifted their hands today and said, I I need courage. I want to be a better leader and I need courage. Lord, I pray that you will fill us with boldness. And that you will give us the conviction that we need to be able to do what's right no matter the cost. Lord, make us better leaders. In Jesus' name.